Okay, I see Quentin is joined. Okay, so okay, think, sorry I'm late. Hi, so I think we can get started. Okay, uh, so should we first uh, go through the questionnaire? That sounds good. Okay. Sure, I, I just need to step away for two minutes, but please get started without me so long. Okay. I'll just uh, share on a screen. I think, um, so this is the survey uh, we look at this last time and just comments. So I'll, I'll go over this again. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, uh, okay, so the first question, how would you identify yourself? So here are, those are the categories. And then, uh, are you aware of the CNCF storage landscape white cape paper? So I have a link there, yes or no. Um, which CNCF storage project are you using or contributing to? So this is, this is the more, uh, with the survey is more for the user side. So we have this, uh, you know, whether you're using it or not here. So we have, we have Kubernetes, Juk, Vitis, TKV, service brokers, CSI, and other. And how do you classify your experience? So any, any comments so far? Nope. Uh, okay. No, I, I'm trying to re read as you go along, but it looks Okay, fine. okay. And, and what attributes of storage systems are the most important for you when making decisions uh, we, uh, when, uh, which storage system to choose. So this is uh, new, I added this one. I think this is a uh, Quinton's feedback. So uh, I don't know, maybe people will choose everything. <laughs> Basically just saying you know, there is some trade off that you have to uh, uh, between your choices, right? So. And then if you have any problems making those uh, decisions. I can think of a few more you can add into that list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could add um, uh, snapshot replication. Uh, oh, so those are, I think we have more about those. Uh, like the, some of the later questions, we have those uh, snapshot, you know, like snapshots replication. So we have those a bit later on, so that those are in the data services section. Right, I'm not sure so, that um, you couldn't put them up there in the other one though, because I believe there are solutions that lack support for those things. Maybe I'm wrong, but. Oh, oh I think uh, I think this is more um, based on the storage uh, white paper. Basically we have the, the those five attributes in the beginning and then we talked about uh, some of the other services, what can okay, provide fine. those. So um, we could add, but maybe there will be overlapping, right? So, so if, that's why it's not there. So those are the basic attributes that we are adding here, basically. So is it okay? We, we can we can yeah, uh, we can go okay. through the rest of them, and then you then you let me know if you think. It, it's this is okay. So basically, the the in the white paper we first talk about okay, so those are the uh, the main uh, five storage attributes. And then when you're making decisions, um, you know, do you have to uh, decide what is most important for you, right? So if you let's say I have some example here, if you choose something that is a a storage system that is strongly consistent, but that maybe that cannot scale horizontally, you know, that maybe uh, some system has a uh, has very high durability, but then maybe performance is not good. So things like that. So um, some of the other, uh, like the data protection, those those are on top of that. There are, those are the other services that you add on top. So uh, putting them together then impact your decision and impact the um, all the basic attributes. Basically, I think that's what it means. So so going down to Q six. Um, yeah. 
deployed, the first one deployed as a hardware solution. I think maybe amplification, you mean, I think, a hardware storage solution, right? I mean. Right, yeah, hardware storage so solution, just okay. Just that hardware, it's somewhat yeah. confusing with it's the confusing? Okay, yeah. okay, so this, yeah, so this basically the first one meaning, yeah, it's like the hardware storage, yeah, like the traditional. Yeah, like a. Enterprise storage, yeah. Like and that. then versus the second one is, uh, you know, the software component on commodity hardware, that's the software. This yeah, so story. that one maybe yeah. if, if they're maybe getting long, but software oh, on, okay. on commodity server software might be a way to make it clear. Commodity the, har hardware server? Commodity okay. server hardware might be a good way to. Okay, commodity server. Or you could just say commodity servers that would work. Commodity server is better, okay. Yeah. Okay, is that uh, better now? Maybe servers. But, servers, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. I doubt that many people do it on a singleton, but. Yeah, so this, they also say, uh, they can, mo it's multi-choice, right? So they can have both, right. or, yeah, they can. So everything is almost, <laughs> every question is like a multi-select because they probably have multiple storage, not just one. And uh, so if you consume your storage from public, public cloud providers, um, and then, uh, or maybe, storage as a service so this is uh yeah this is also this is the quinton's uh, feedback maybe somebody um will provide some database service on top of uh like aws or google cloud and then you know customer will just uh, use that one directly so that will be this layer on top so we have this one is there anything else we could add or this is i think Either it's a hardware, it's purely the hardware storage solution or software on commodity servers or public cloud provider storage. It looks good service. to me. Okay. Okay. And then this is basically just, uh, you know, what the file you're using, file block, object, key value stores, databases. And then you know, um, we missed everything there, but I think a category that I know is out there a lot that isn't in mm -hmm. the list would be what? a streaming solution like Kafka. Okay, so yeah, what? what um, so what should we? <laughs> that well, other? the trouble is a lot of people mm -hmm. would respond to Kafka, but I hate to put the name of one specific yeah. solution. So so they could have, they could have other right? They put they like e.g. Kafka. But I'm open to other people's suggestions. Mm -hmm. Trying to just e e Kafka, where do you want to put that? I mean, maybe under databases. But you know, it is a different category. Kafka? Is that the data? Uh, uh, Kafka? So that's a messaging. Yeah, I think that's no, a, no. Under yeah. databases, it's a different oh, category. Oh, 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 you mean like a streaming, streaming? No, but that's not storage. So, uh, what do you call that? Well, streaming, you can uh, use Kafka to persistently store things. Yeah, we, we didn't we didn't include uh, message buses as part of the scope of this working group. I don't think so. I think I mean if, if we, you know, uh, we, we need to restrict the scope somewhere. And I don't think Kafka is what people understand to be a storage system. Okay. So they could uh, include the, if they think of that, then maybe they could put you know we have other. All right, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, right. so we have other and we have don't know. Yeah, Kafka is, uh, I'm not sure, yeah. Okay. Block, okay, so block, um, then you specify what blocks through system, then you give a name, then actually, if you give a name, then if it's well known, then we probably <laughs> already know uh, all the other truths about that particular through system. Um, so we still highlighted these two questions. One is the data protection. Uh, basically, those are the, uh, you know, we basically just listed RAID and erasure coding, those type of technologies. And then the next question, we have uh, other advanced services like replication, snapshots, clone, encryption, or other. So just to, uh, if some people may not know all those details about uh, like the, the first one, I'm not sure. So, so, but we have other or don't know. If they really don't know the details, just uh, they could just say don't know. 
So is this okay, uh, Steve? You know, you, you mentioned this, uh, the snapshot certificate. So, so we have it here, basically. So do you have that? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah that's okay. Okay. Uh, right. can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, I think, oh, should we add one more question related to how the block storage is accessed, like ISC, EFC, that kind of interface? I think they, uh, I had that before, but then I, after last round of feedback, I removed them because they're saying if you, if they specify the name, then you probably know that already. So that's why I removed that. We have, we had a very long question, long question the last time, the protocols. Okay. Um, the first, uh, uh, that question eight doesn't have any examples for local or like, you know, on-prem uh, block storage options, except for Ceph. I don't mm -hmm. think we have anything. Is it just a what? So it's just some names. It can be anything, right? So just a. I I this is just a. It's just some examples. It can be anything. Right. Um, maybe along with Ceph, should we just put uh, FC, ICC, that kind of stuff? Uh, well, we could we could do that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Those are not block storage systems. Those are access yeah. Those are just protocol. Yeah, that's why that's <laughs> it's a separate through the RBD. But uh, yeah, we don't have the we removed the protocol. Do we need to put that back? But if they specify storage, then probably we know. Uh, sometimes it's for both. Sometimes it's just one. Um, I'm not uh, sure that we really care very much. Do we? Okay. Uh, well, but the protocols is so uh, kind of important. Right? Oh, I can I can add like LVM. <laughs> that could be it's iSCSI at least that's covered. At least that's one one more protocol there iSCSI. Just to be clear, the vast majority of uh, people running on virtualized uh, hardware, mm -hmm. uh, they don't see that protocol at all. They they just see mm -hmm. a block device in their virtual machine. Um, so for the vast majority of Cloud, remember, we're talking about cloud storage here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the vast majority of people using cloud storage don't see that detail. Okay, I mean, so probably, yeah, for, yeah, maybe for the enterprise storage, then usually they probably know that, like, okay, it's FC or ASCII, they probably will make some choice there. So, but. No, no, but so they in that case, I, I'm uh -huh. not sure. In that case, they're running OpenStack and mm -hmm. the system disks in OpenStack are backed by some other enterprise storage system and they get plugged into the bottom of their virtual machine and they still don't see iSCSI or uh, fiber channel or whatever. Um, uh, I think it's probably depending on which level that they are. I mean, if, uh, if they are yeah. actually set, if they're setting it up, actually they have to know. <laughs> You're setting up FC is difficult. <laughs> so, I mean, if they are actually physically have to set up those systems, right? Then they would have to know. <laughs> so, but if well, they- yeah, I might have a specialized yeah. question that simply says, if you manage your own storage. Mm. You know, oh yeah, right? maybe. Okay. Mm. That, that was actually a general comment that I gave Xing was, uh -huh. uh, we've got users of this stuff and they have right. knowledge and a set of interests. Uh, mm -hmm. We have administrators of this stuff or installers or builders of, mm -hmm. you know, Ceph maintainer or whatever. Uh, and if they're answering this, they have a different set of knowledge and a different set of requirements. Um, right. So I think we need to be very careful that we don't confuse particularly end users who I think are the ones we kind of care the most about uh, by asking them questions, either they don't know or they don't care. Okay. And, and I, I think, think if the they, okay. versus fiber channel would be an example of something where they don't know or care. Right. So, I, I think I agree with that one. I, I think it's more for a cluster administrator than an end user. That question. So we so we do in the beginning we do have this uh, the the category. Can we just take a look at this to make sure that we covered all the. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, whoever will be responding to this. So we do have the cluster operator, cloud provider, project distributor, or the storage vendor, uh, just storage user. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure from that if you could, to Quentin's point, if someone was on OpenStack, some subset would actually manage the tier underneath the VMs and some might not. Mm -hmm. you yeah. can't tell from their answer here which category they'd fall into. They could, they could, they could use a multiple, right? They could pick multiple categories if they think they are. Uh, so do we need to add something, uh, how to say, manage, um, uh, should admin or no? Well, that would be like cluster operator type, it could be. 
Yeah, but even then, it doesn't tell you whether they go below, whether yeah. they actually manage below the, the hypervisor layer. Right. So I don't know. Do we need to add a question for that? But then, um, uh, do we need to add a question? Uh, do you manage your own storage? I think it depends on what some customers do, some customers don't. Do we need to say, do you manage your own storage? Do we need to need to add a question somewhere on, on top or? I don't know. I, I'm hesitant whether their interpretation of a question like that might just even be that somebody who buys EBS volumes and pays for it thinks they manage it. Um, yeah, that's true. So maybe, so we'll just leave it like this and then we, we, we will be talking to the end user group and anyway, maybe we can, you know, they can still give us feedback if they think, you know, there's more questions they want to answer or, <laughs> right, so. Um, so one more uh, suggestion around the lines of, instead of asking, you know, protocols, iSCSI, fiber channel, whatever, I think the more interesting bit that I'd be interested in is, does your storage uh, system require the installation of a kernel module? Uh, that I've noticed mm. as a, kind of uh, a challenge for folks who are trying to deploy your kernel module or your storage? Kubernetes. You're thinking of a, a kernel module in the VM and without it, uh, the storage. Right, storage. or the host, whether or even on bare metal. But yep. mm. yeah. the other one is for the for software defined storage that's containerized, whether it requires running as root or privileged containers. Mm. Um, uh, but those are a little am bit I right on that side? Like that, that seems <laughs> strikes me as in the same category as yeah. your module. Yeah, I mean, for, for as far as I can tell, anybody who's deploying a SDS on top of Kubernetes basically has to run privileged. They have to be able to access uh, the, the block devices underneath to expose them. Um, maybe if they expose just file system, they can get away with not being privileged, but the vast majority are privileged. Um, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, right. uh, also, should we have a separate section for just cluster operators or cluster administrators where these questions are present and normal yeah, users can skip idea. that section? Can yeah, I, I think that? you're right because um, I think a lot of users would even be confused by this and wouldn't even understand what a kernel module is. Yeah. So those I'm, are, I'm those are the admin. I guess the admin would be the one that would do those. So. Um. I, I had a lot of similar comments. I think as soon as somebody answers, you know, EBS mm -hmm. uh, as the thing they use, then we kind of know what the answers to a whole bunch of other questions are, so we should not ask them. And similarly, okay. if they choose Ceph or they didn't choose whatever, something else, then a whole bunch of questions are irrelevant. Um, yeah, the, the only thing I'd say there is there's lots of people who are multi-cloud, so just choosing EBS doesn't mean you're not also maintaining a physical on-prem data center. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, and, and, and that's why I'm saying that this kind of, is looking more and more like it needs to be a, a proper interactive questionnaire where depending on the answers to your questions, you get asked other questions um, because you, you're totally right. I mean, when you, when you ask them, which of these do you use? And they say, I use EBS and I use Ceph on-prem or whatever um, because I'm a hybrid cloud user, uh, then the answers to the EBS questions are different to the answers to the Ceph questions. And you need right. to ask the same question twice, once for EBS and once for Ceph, except that for EBS, we already know what the answers are for the most case because they're defined by the Ceph product. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, the EBS product. Um, so yeah, we, we end up making a very, we either, I see Chris is saying, yeah, we need a branching questionnaire. Um, and, and the other overarching kind of comment I made was if we give people more than, um, you know, a very small number of questions to answer, particularly if a percentage of them are like questions we shouldn't need to ask them, they will just give up and not give us an answer. <laughs> so we yeah, need to so that's why I, yeah, they I'm trying not to make it too uh, long, yeah. When they don't understand. Uh, so 
I was, I don't know, I was wondering if uh, we should just uh, have like a, uh, maybe a simple set of questions that get, get some feedback and then maybe we need to um, get a, I don't know, another round of survey or I'm not sure. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I guess a form of branching is you do an initial broad survey and depending on the answers, you give them follow-up secondary mm -hmm. surveys on specific subjects, if that's what you mean. That would work. It's a form of branching that... Mm -hmm. Okay. How yeah, is this going to be distributed, by the way, as an email with a link or... Uh... I need to, yeah, actually I need to ask a, a, a Quinton about this one. Uh, so you said uh, this is the, what, the release team or the... Uh, there was, you, you have the um, a template of this one, right, from another survey. How did they distribute the survey? Is it, it's not, not using this, right? It has to be some kind of a format that they distribute the survey. Uh, well, when you say, I think Steve's question was different, is, is how oh. are we going to get it out to people? Are we going to email it to them or are we going to you know, announce it at the community meeting or whatever? Was that your question, Steve? Yes. Okay, so, so I don't know the precise answer to that. I believe it was just mailing lists. Uh, I can find out precisely how they did it. Um, I think a, a different question is, is how do we actually uh, expose this to, to users? Is it All a- right. That's a my question, yeah. Or is it a piece of web software that we develop or is it something else? Uh, or is it a spreadsheet they fill in or whatever? Uh, that's a different question and it's looking increasingly to me, I think if we had a simple set of questions that we asked everybody and they just went and clicked through multiple choice questions, you know, SurveyMonkey would be a reasonably decent answer. It's not clear to me that we can actually formulate this branching questionnaire effectively using SurveyMonkey, but I, I, I'm not an expert on that. So uh, maybe we can figure that out later. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think that if we have to do branching, the Surrey Monkey probably doesn't give us that much capabilities to do that. Uh, so, okay, yeah, we can decide on that later. Okay, so we, we should... You... Sorry, sorry, Xing, I keep interrupting you. I don't know, it's possible that we can actually have links from one survey to another in Survey Monkey, where you, you know, you answer two questions and then it says if you answered yes to either of these, then click on this link to fill in this other survey monkey thing. So it looks like a branching survey, but it's actually multiple survey monkeys. Just Don't a check, okay. okay. One other thing while I'm babbling on, uh, I just wanted to point out that I think the, uh, the idea that you had, Steve, of, of having multiple rounds of surveys where you ask you know, one set of questions and then depending on who answers what, you send out another set of surveys. I think the problem with that is that you end up with a potential like survey fatigue problem. Where people say, oh, I've, I've already done the bloody storage working group survey. I'm not doing another one. Or in the worst case, they actually just think that it's one they filled in already and they just ignore the second one. So yeah. I, I would caution us. The other thing approach. is to, to send them a follow up requires exposure to privacy rules and things that vastly complicate it, right? Because you, yeah. as soon as you start taking IDs, uh, it becomes messy. Well, would, By the way, while we were talking about the monkey, and it does do branching, but it's only available in a few yeah. Yeah. So, okay, maybe we'll, we'll just first uh, get the questions first and then we decide what to do with it. So if we do, let's say if we do a uh, branching. Um, <clears throat> well, maybe yeah, we, yeah. I don't know, after this long discussion, I'm thinking maybe getting a simple one that has pretty generic questions is the better way to go here rather than to cover you know, every, every last corner in every room. <laughs> So there are, yeah, so if we do branch, we have, uh, so I think we also need to decide how many categories we want to go through. So here, like we have several different identities, right? So um, that's another thing. <laughs> if we want to do branching uh, for, it could, yeah, it could go differently for each one of those.
So can we just ask some general questions first, and then we'll see if uh, you know if it's too much, or you know we can say if you if you are your, your role is something, then for example like this question, right? And then we'll just say if you are an admin and this this one requires something, we can add this, and we'll see how that how that goes. Because if they are not, they can just skip this question, um, rather than design a completely different survey for a different role, it's probably not necessary. There are still a lot of common questions, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, one other idea that just came to mind is, um, I think different people have different tolerances for questionnaires. And you know, I think there'll be a large number of people who are only gonna answer like somewhere around 10 questions and then they'll just get irritated. And then mm. there are other people who's prepared to spend, you know, much longer answering much more detailed questions. Um, and maybe if we structure the questionnaire in such a way that we can accommodate both, mm. uh, essentially with mandatory questions, um, mm -hmm. you have to answer these. And then once you've answered these, based on your answers to those, here's a bunch of additional uh, uh, optional questions. Then, then at least we can you know, get the basic answers from the people who are not prepared to spend much time uh, and get more information from people who are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's a bit like those free form questions at the end of some of these things, like, is there any other stuff you want to tell us? And then some people will write tons of stuff there and other people will leave it blank. Um, but maybe we want to do it in a slightly more structured way. Also okay. Yeah, yeah, I was having the same thoughts and I started mm -hmm. uh, searching for data on recommended numbers of questions and it looks like there's there's people who say that suggest that you tell them not e not just the number of questions, but your request says this will take 10 to 15 minutes. And a lot of people will will enter into the path if you promise them that. But mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, beyond that, you're not going to get much participation for an unpaid survey. So maybe what we should do is rather than questions, we should test this on ourselves. Mm -hmm. to see how long it actually takes to answer and come up with this, uh, you know, come up with a, a survey that is legitimately going to take 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a very useful goal. Yeah. 10 sounds good. Okay, 10 minutes? Okay. Yeah, if that case, then, we'll, okay, we'll just... Uh... And I don't honestly know whether that's 10 questions or not, but whatever... It, whatever you do in 10 minutes, then we cut it off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we may need to also uh, see if we want to rearrange some of the questions too. If we think some questions are more important for them to see up front <laughs> before they quit. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, should we, okay, so should we continue? So basically I think those, this two may be, yeah, some of those uh, depending on the, the row, right? Some people may not know how to answer those. Um, uh, so do we, let's say, if we want to have some optional questions at the end, um, so this type of question, if you are, watch, I mean, let's go back to the, we don't well, I'm any. guessing, just a guess here, but I'm guessing yeah. what we have in this doc now is already at the 10 minute mark, but. It's already, yeah, it's already, we can cut, I'm, I'm, but um, I was just thinking the cluster, we don't really have a cluster admin. Do we need to add that one? We only have, you see the, the vendor, the contributor, distributor, user. Do we need to add a admin here? Probably should, or is the operator will be you know, operator I, will be the. Honestly, I I think there's if you only describe it as admin, there will be a lot of user confusion as to what what it means to be an admin. Mm, I mean, okay. somebody who simply consumes as a service out of AWS, yeah, but has yeah. admin credentials, probably considers themselves to be an admin. Okay. So basically, we just remove this one. Just let, let them decide if they can, yeah. if they want. So let's say, for example, if we make this one an optional question, right? Oops. Optional. This is a more detailed question. If they really need this, then, then they can answer this one, right? They can say don't know. So we, we put this one at the end. Is that okay? Or 
Yeah, that looks okay. So, sad? Well, I think... Yes. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. Okay. Steve, you're trying to say something? Oh, I, I was going to say that I thought Saad might be only on a phone so much, but oh, oh, now okay. he has a camera showing on the thing, so. Yeah, it looks like he is uh, on the phone. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to find a mute button, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, I'll just, yeah. Uh, I'll just, uh, that's your storage system require install for kernel modules, move that to the end uh, as an optional, more deep question. Okay, so, um, those type of questions, should those also go to the end or we'll leave it here for I think now? They're okay where they are. Okay. Um, and then for file system, it's basically similar. What type, what file system are you using? And then how, uh, you know, it's the same, right? So we have how is data protected and what the more advanced uh, service. Now on that specify on file system, you chose not to make it multiple choice. Um, if oh, I basically, I, I, I asked them to, to specify. I mean, we, um, unless if you want to give some uh, examples, because I actually, this one basically just, uh, this is just a Well, an if I tried to answer it myself, I'd be wondering, do you want like a sp me to identify a specific vendor or are you asking for uh, NSFS versus uh, SMB, for example? Mm -hmm. Okay, so protocol or okay. what you mean by the question. All right, so, okay, so maybe we should, we have something similar, just to give some examples. Uh, uh, what is, I actually, I'm not, I'm, I don't know, what is the one on the, what's the name of the, the one on AWS? Is that an EF, EFS? Yeah. Something like that, right? something like that. And then GlassFS or something, something. Uh, All right. Something like that. Uh, we actually, yeah, we, I do have the protocol questions earlier, but I also removed that, I think, after <clears throat> the feedback. So, but they, if they specify this one, then we would know, right? Um, <clears throat> we could add the, the protocol question that, as, as a optional, right? At the end, we can add some optional questions as pro for the protocol. I think what we what we need to ask ourselves for every question we ask here, why do we want to know this information? Uh, and mm -hmm. is it important? Right. I thought, uh, so I thought the uh, Alex was saying, you know, he he was actually wanted to keep those type of like the nine and ten those type of questions that he thought maybe with this uh, we could have some ideas for the next round of uh, we could have some uh, use case, you know, look at. Uh, what type of use case we want to look into next. I think that's what he was saying. So know a little bit more details um, rather than all just a very high level questions. So I think that's what he was saying. Um, yes, and, and just to be clear, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't ask them questions. I'm just saying every question we ask, mm -hmm. we should be clear why we're asking and what we're going to do with the information if we get it. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we're going to end up asking them all the questions we can think of asking them, and they're not going to answer them. <laughs> right, right. So if they, um, because in the last, uh, you know, white paper, right, and then when we would present it, it was said, okay, we have the white paper now, the next step, we want to uh, do some mm -hmm. use case, right? So basically, uh, look at some specific use cases. So, go through the survey and then after they answer this, we can look at the survey and then decide uh, what use cases we want to choose and then maybe do some more deep analysis of those use cases. Um, so, all right, so should I, should we move to the next? I think it's almost, uh, actually, we almost uh, there. So object store, just uh, you choose what object store you're using, um, key values, so we gave some examples. And databases, so I didn't list any of those. So some of those actually, <laughs> it's up here uh, in the key values, but actually they are also databases, <laughs> so. <laughs> and then orchestration. Yeah. I wonder if this orchestration section should move up a little bit. 
So this is kind of a towards the end. We have this, what container orchestration system are you using? And what type of workloads are you currently running? So this, you know, this is you know, what we discussed last time. So uh, Steve, Steve dropped off. I think he uh, <coughs> gave some suggestions. Um, you know, we just uh, went to the, the Docker Hub <laughs> Uh, site and then just see what are the most used ones. So picked a few, just give it, give them as an example, saying, okay, tell us what type of workloads are you running, uh, not on containers, on containers, and uh, what are you planning to run in the next three to uh, six months? And are you using a volume plugin? And then you know, then tell us if you're using entry plugin. A Docker uh, plugin or flex volume CSI. That's that's the end of it. So all, all of those questions, Ian, correct me if I'm wrong. Those are only things that a cluster administrator would know or care about, right? Um, right. Yeah, those are probably a uh, cluster administrator. Mm hmm. The reason I'm asking is I'm, I'm wondering if one way of simplifying this dramatically would be just to limit it to end users in the first round. Mm -hmm. So I'm only interested if you are a, uh, you know, someone consuming cloud. Uh, and so we remove essentially all but one of the options in the first question, and then we can uh, basically delete that question. And then any question in the questionnaire that does not pertain to an end user, um, we remove. And the benefit of that is one, the questionnaire gets much simpler. It becomes very easy to decide what to put in and what not to. And then if we wanted to do another questionnaire later for uh, like CNCF project contributors, we can do that and they won't, they, they, there will be very minor overlap. The, the audiences will be completely different. So we won't have the questionnaire fatigue problem. Um, right, but I think for the, I was just thinking, I was looking at the people in the end user uh, group. Um, they are people who are actually managing their own data centers, right? so it's not like you're, you're just using it. So they probably actually do have more knowledge. I mean, um, if we are just uh, completely saying, okay, you're on. might be trying to talk to us, but he's muted. <laughs> Oh, oh, I was saying, yes, you're, you're right. The Venn diagram isn't two separate circles. There's an overlap there. Which one? I'm sorry. Which oh, one is a little? The concept of use, some, you, some people are both users and admins at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do know a lot of end users, they actually have their own data center. They actually manage those. It's kind of hard to say that you are, they are in the CNCF uh, end user group and you're saying you can't answer those questions or I'm not but sure. Uh, I, I think Quentin might have a point that mm -hmm. maybe we should get out an introductory short survey just to get the experience of doing a survey and simplify it. And okay. it would have the attribute of uh, not pushing up against that 10 minute li limit either. And Let's see what happens, and we can do more okay. later. So, so how about we we can we just uh, choose those questions that we think are uh, just for end user first, and then we then we'll see. So let's see. There you are. And right now, yeah, there are more. There are twenty questions. So we still want to know. I think we want to know right? <coughs> the workload. Right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, excuse me. I think I need to go get some water. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> okay, <clears throat> so we just keep 
like the three question, they are actually uh, pretty similar. Do we really count them as a, like three questions or just one question? <laughs> Um, I, I would suggest perhaps getting rid of the first one and uh, combining the other two. Oh, okay. Get rid of 19 and combine 20 and 21 and say, which types of workloads are you currently or planning to run? Um, and then, yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh, so you're saying like not, not asking this one. <coughs> uh, it was just a suggestion uh, that, that we uh, just have a combined question saying, which of the following are you either currently or planning to run in the next three to six months? Oh, okay. All right. Then, Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was saying uh, these questions don't have to be under the orchestration section, right? I think they're pretty general. Yeah, we can move this up. So if we are going to say have only 10 simple questions, we maybe we don't need those titles anymore. It's just a, right. we initially have those uh, sections because there are many, many questions for each section. <clears throat> so if we just have 10 questions, I would just get rid of those sections, I think. Yeah, we, we can move this. Do we? This one we still should have, right? Or yeah, is that? That one is good, I think. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Okay, so so we just move those everything <clears throat> to the front without the without the section. Okay, so and then we don't want the plugin ones. Okay. Um And so we still have, yeah, we will have those. Right? So we have the, this will keep, 16 yeah. will keep. And we'll keep this one. Yeah. And yeah, we'll keep this. So we, yeah, we then, we maybe we'll see if we still need this. This question is a little hard to answer, I think. I'm going to have to drop because I've got to prep for another meeting coming up. But, um, okay. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Um, okay, then this one, uh, this one is like a more like intro kind of thing. If they answer the below, then we know which one they're using. <laughs> so I don't know if this one's still, but this one maybe if they want to answer other, then it will be here, they can say other. Yeah. Uh, so it's, so what about uh, what about this one? We, we need this one, right? So they... Sorry, Xing, uh, one, one uh, other suggestion. We could potentially get rid of um, question seven and merge it into the sections you have below. Just, just a thought. Um, okay. If you have a block section, the first question can be, if you're using block, complete the section. Um, and then you've got an answer to the question seven automatically. Okay. I was only thinking that if they are saying like, uh, like Stephen was mentioning, um, what Kafka, if someone was <laughs> considering that one, then <laughs> they answer other. <laughs> That's why I thought maybe, you know, keep this, but otherwise, yeah, we probably don't need this. Yeah, or you can put it at the section at the end. Are you using any other stuff that we haven't, you know, asked you about in this questionnaire? Right at the end, you you might have some free form, free form, uh, you know, other information type questions. Okay, so that's optional. Okay. Yeah. We'll still have yeah. We'll move everything else in the optional. Okay. Mm. Then this probably will be optional too. I think it's maybe not that important. And the attributes one, we need this one, right? We need to know they what is important for them. But they probably will answer everything, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe a better way to ask that is to rank them. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, I, I need to check if, uh, if that, that is uh, possible in Surrey Monkey, or maybe that is possible, Surrey Monkey. Ranking. 
Yeah, we'll okay. I'm sure there's a way you can do it. You know, either you have okay. to put a number next to each one or something. Okay. Yeah, I think the ranking is better, yeah. And this is, still, is this needed? Want to classify your own experience? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. And this one I think we need, right? We want to know what project. So I think we're going to take the contributing part out because we're only interested in people. Okay, using. you're using, okay. <clears throat> and this one we need. So they know that. And then how do you identify yourself? Yeah, so, okay. So now we have how many questions? We, we probably still have 10. Yeah, I would, I would remove um, most of Q1, the question one, um, I think, yep. I think essentially what we're saying, and, and again, this is a suggestion, I'm not mandating anything, but I'm, I'm uh -huh. suggesting that we're only targeting people who use uh, cloud storage. And so, okay, so we don't really need this. They don't just, to, they can answer it, but we assume that they are using it. Uh, uh, well, I don't know what, what do other people think? If, if we said something along the, the lines of, we're only interested in your answers here if you use cloud native storage. So, you know, if you're implicitly, if you're a storage vendor and you use stuff, then we're interested in you as a user, not as a vendor. And if you're a project distributor, same thing. And if you're a cloud provider, same thing. Um, and, and all of the, yeah, same, if you're a project, so basically, people. Are, so basically, it will just be this one category, basically. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we're just saying that we are targeting cloud native storage user. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they can still the vendor. They can still be a user in their like dev development even even right. Exactly. So, yeah. But but we're only interested in them as their capacity. As a user. In their okay. capacity as a user. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, so now, so now we have dramatically cut it down now. So we only have <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I think that's good. So uh, just off the art, like an additional yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Should we ask for the biggest pain points they have around uh, mm -hmm. uh, using container native storage? Which pain points? Mm -hmm. Pain points. Do doesn't have to have a uh, selection, but more like a input from them. So that, will be, that can be the optional part that we can ask them. Yeah. yeah. I think it's actually very important so if, if we can make it simple to answer and non-optional I'd, I'd be in favor of that because i think this is you know one of the main things we want to know is okay <laughs> what do you not what do you not like about cloud native storage <laughs> so we can okay. pick <laughs> uh, i don't know to what extent we can make that a um, multiple choice uh with another category um, yeah so what do you so it's about hard to you how to you install, how to, how to deploy, well, they're a user, and they still, have to, they still have to deploy it somehow. So you're assuming they are using cloud storage then? Yeah, uh, so, uh, uh, some inputs on that one, right? So like the failure or something, like some failure happened. That, uh, performance. Is this a tie to the, it's actually, this is actually tied to this one's more, let's see. Yeah. Like the at, attribute question, but this is more mm -hmm. abstract. And then that one is more concrete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, so we give, when you give some choices, right? So then they can easier for them to answer. Um, so what are the things that you don't like about it? It's hard, hard to, Deploy, hard to manage, hard, what? Um, they I don't have a solution to, <clears throat> yeah. 
I think I keep interrupting somebody. There was somebody trying to talk in the background. Did I interrupt you? Uh, I was this Kiran again. Uh, so I, was just, uh, I think this kind of putting it next to this uh, Q5 made sense. Uh, it kind of answered yeah. what I was. So, okay. so you just leave it as a blank. Just let them answer, or do we want to? We can leave it blank. Just adding two things to number five. So one is cost. And one is uh, ease of use. You want to add this? Exactly. Oh, okay. And then use exactly the same list for your next pain points question. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so basically, they cannot achieve. They cannot achieve this. So yeah, it's a kind of a here, but I think what I have is probably a little bit more <laughs> difficult to read. <laughs> It's a, that's basically what that means. You know, have you run into any problems trying to yeah. meet those requirements? That's what, so. Yeah. So can, yeah, maybe can you use this, can you add this one as an example, yeah. Maybe again, I think you accidentally didn't cut the ease of use, you, you didn't copy the ease of use item to the bottom of the second list. By oh, the way. oh, okay. I think it was just a cut and paste thing, yeah. Okay. Um, and maybe <laughs> this is also a ranking question, so like, if any of these are a pain, what are the most problematic of these for you mm -hmm. in, in ranked order? Okay. <coughs> and I think don't, no, it doesn't apply. <coughs> Either okay. of these. <coughs> well, if they have this one then a little difficult to rank <laughs> because they could answer more than just one one thing. Yeah, I guess if they have some terrible pain point that we haven't got on the list, they can write it in there and say, this is my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, they, okay, so um, other comments on this looks fine now. So you have 12 questions basically. I think we've done very well if, if we can if we can narrow it down to 12 useful questions like this, I think that's something people can answer. Okay. And it looks like they're useful questions. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I will move some of those to the optional, you know, that's depend, you know, if they want to, then they can, but they can skip them, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay then, uh, so we're okay with the survey now. Um, Quinton, don't we have another item that you want to discuss? Right? Are we running out of time? <laughs> it's already end of the... Yeah, I think we, we're out of time. Uh, okay. You asked how we engage with the uh, end user community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty straightforward thing. They have a meeting uh, and we can go there and we can ask a panel of end users questions. Um, okay. I can send the details out to the mailing list. It's pretty straightforward. I think we should do it. Uh, okay question is just when when we want to do it and I guess okay once we finalize maybe in a few weeks time once we finalize this questionnaire we can maybe use the opportunity to one mm -hmm. point the end users at the questionnaire and maybe even discuss some of these questions you know ask them these specific questions and get some debate going cool okay I thought I thought uh, Alex also has a concern that I think he's uh, because he talked to 
uh, Cheryl, and uh, she was saying that maybe it, it just uh, needs some representatives from the vendor side or something. Not, but not not like everyone on the list uh, joined that. And he was saying something like that. So I think that he uh, wanted to help make a decision over there. But we can talk about it that later. I mean, yeah, first fi first finalize the questionnaire. Yeah, let maybe send that out. Uh, or, or yeah, we can chat with Alex uh, either okay. on the list or or uh, some other way. Cool. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. So I will um, modify this and then I can send it to the can send it to the mailing list for more feedback. Sounds great. Thank you for putting it together. Okay, thank you. So, bye now. Bye, Shink.